Hello and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, one of the civic partners for our show. Today, my guest is Connie Barone. She is the site manager for the Sackett's Harbor Battlefield State Historic Site. She's here to talk about the Voices and Votes, Democracy in America, Traveling Exhibition, presented by the Smithsonian's Museum on Main Street. It's going to be featured this spring at the Union Hotel there in Sackett's Harbor. Connie, welcome to North Country Matters. I'm excited to learn more about this exhibit and this this is a very special opportunity for North Country residents to learn more about our great American experiment in democracy, isn't it? Yes, yes. And uh, Sackett's Harbor is the only location for this exhibition in its statewide travel uh, here in the North Country. Okay, that's exciting. So let's start by asking you to tell us a little bit about the Sackett's Harbor Battlefield State Historic Site and what you do there as the site manager for the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. That's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> it is a long one. And then when you add on to that Sackett's Harbor Battlefield State Historic Site, it gets even longer. Uh, so I am, uh, as you noted, the, the site manager. And uh, we have a facility that is recognized by the National Park Service as one of the top two War of 1812 sites in the country. And that has to do with the outcome of the Second Battle of Sackett's Harbor in 1813 and uh, the uh, ongoing threat to preservation of open battlegrounds. Um, and that is something that um, the state and the Battlefield Trust are working on all the time. So that's good news. Uh, so our historic site focuses primarily on the, the War of 1812. Although we have very little to see from the War of 1812, because after the war, the army demolished the fortifications and uh, the barracks that were here. So today we have a small fortification, Fort Kentucky, on the property, but we do have 70 acres of ground that is considered battlegrounds, as well as Horse Island. So during the War of 1812, two battles were fought here. Uh, one uh, was in 1812, one of the first battles during the war. And that was a, a, a very small engagement. But the next year, the second battle of Sackett's Harbor in uh, May 29, 1813, was the more significant one. And so, as I mentioned, the, because of the outcome of that, we are ranked quite high by the National Park Service. So, um, over the years then, after the war, the Army demolished the fortifications, but the Navy stayed right here because this was a shipbuilding center and there was a very large ship that was left unfinished after the war. So the Navy maintained a presence here at the harbor. They built a ship house over that unfinished vessel, thinking maybe someday they would have to finish it. They did not, and it eventually in the 1880s was demolished. In the meantime, though, the Navy did build structures here at the Navy Yard, and over the years, there were about a dozen different commandants who lived here at the Navy Yard, and the lieutenants, uh, their assistants were in another structure. And, and that building, the lieutenant's house, is where we have our offices and uh, reception area and gift shop today. Okay, thank you. So uh, the Hay Memorial Library there in Sackett's Harbor is collaborating with you on this special exhibit. Can you give us a, a thumbnail sketch of what the Hay Library has to offer as well? Uh, yes, well, we've talked around many things. In fact, uh, once, twice, or three times a year, we do something called a story walk. And because we have a, a nationally recognized history trail, uh, the story walk uh, connects very nicely, and we always recognize National Trails Day, the first weekend in June. So with the Hay Memorial Library, we have also partnered on a program through the Humanities uh, Council uh, from New York State, uh, Humanities New York, and it's called Reading and Discussion. And it's a series. We do one in the spring. We do one in the fall. Humanities provides the theme for the discussions and the readings. And then they send us the books that go along with the series. So we usually partner with Hay Memorial Library for that as well. Wow, that's exciting. So uh, a, a great deal of uh, 
historical information is presented every year between the two of you, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. And then, you know, we're both focused on education. So what makes the Smithsonian Travel Exhibit Service Museum, uh, their on Main Street program, so special? And how was it, Connie, that Sackett's Harbor was chosen as a site this year? Yes, well, um, I've got a little quote that I wanted to do, which kind of sums that up. So uh, this is a quote. Through a Museum on Main Street program, the Museum Association of New York, or called Manny, uh, created, creates museum spaces where visitors can explore the content and controversies behind our democratic system. This investment has allowed Manny to install the Smithsonian Exhibition at 12 museums across New York State, helping communities to facilitate thought-provoking discussion about the roots and responsibilities of our democracy, making educational and cultural opportunities more accessible to everyone. One more paragraph. Uh, designed for small town museums, libraries, and cultural centers. This exhibition serves as a community meeting place for conversations about democracy, the freedoms and responsibilities of citizens, et cetera, et cetera. And the site was chosen because it is one of New York State's economic development regions. So several, several reasons there. And we are the second location. Uh, ours is going on right now. We have the exhibition here for, for six weeks. Okay, thank you. And you know, as you know, and, and I had the pleasure of actually going to the Smithsonian once many years ago with my children when they were young, it is such a rich resource for all of us here in this country. And the fact that they are doing this program and actually going out where people are is such a, a great thing, isn't it? Yes, yes. And um, I, there are quite a few sponsors for this, and, and I will provide you with the list so that you can post that. Many people need to be thanked. Um, one of the things that, that we're doing, which I which has been fun already, is that we're working with an organization called Our Story Bridge, and they collect oral stories. Um, you're familiar, of course, with oral history gathering, and usually these are lengthy uh, accounts. But with Story Bridge, the stories have to be about three minutes long. So the story has to be very specific, it has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, they have given us a number of themes. And so we are making appointments with people to record their stories. And those stories, the categories are, if I may, democracy, history, citizenship, voting, diversity, equity and inclusion, civil rights, activism, and power of the press. So we have had a number of people who we have interviewed so far, and their stories then go into this data collection by our Story Bridge organization. So this year's exhibit is actually being held in the Union Hotel there in, in the harbor. How does local history fit into the larger narrative of the Voices and Votes program? What makes the story of Sackett's Harbor such a good local illustration of the growth of our democracy here in America? Uh, yes. We, as, as participants with this traveling exhibition, had to do our own stories. So we looked at how do we do a spin-off from these major themes from the traveling exhibition. And we came up with, um, I think, basically three areas. One, of course, War of 1812. But how did we want to look at the War of 1812? Well, we're looking at it from the point of view of volunteers. So the volunteers, the militia, or the citizen soldiers. And then we look at how the war here in this community impacted people and whether they chose to participate or whether they were engulfed in the conflict without choosing to be in it. So that's one area. Another section we're looking at is uh, women, women's history. We focus on women in government. So the first female mayor in New York State is from Sackett's Harbor. 
but also within women and government, um, we are also looking, I guess you could say government easily, Mrs. Metcalf, who was the caretaker of this U.S. Navy station uh, around 1905, 1910. Uh, so she was employed by the government and she was in charge of a Navy station. The only woman at that time, of course, to be in charge of a Navy station. Um, and another section we look at in uh, talking about women's history are the World War I war brides. So Sackett's Harbor had Madison Barracks, the Army Post, and when the soldiers came back from World War I with their European brides, one of the centers for them to gather was here at Madison Barracks. The objective by the government was to Americanize those women. And so that is also a fascinating story. And then the kind of the third area that we looked at, uh, a little more challenging, because here at the historic site, just before the Civil War, the commandant was from Georgia. And as the war broke out, he had to make a decision. Was he going to stay with the Union, his lifelong career in the U.S. Navy, or was he going to fight with the Confederacy? So we talk about his choice, and the commandant who was here before him, just before the Civil War, and the commandant just after he left. So we look at choices, the kind of what, is, what does loyalty mean? Uh, you know, who are you, um, who you're fighting for, and why? So as part of this whole exhibition, in the exhibit, we put up these questions. You know, have you ever had to make a choice yourself that made a big difference, not only for yourself, but maybe your family, your community? And what kind of volunteer work do you do? Do you volunteer to help your community? So questions like that. And when we have the school tours here during this exhibit, one of the things we ask the second and fourth graders is to write down, what does democracy mean to you? And then we take a number of those answers and we post them up on the wall in the exhibit space. That sounds like a great uh, exercise to do with those young kids. And of course, uh, fourth grade is often the, the point in time when they are introduced to uh, New York State and local history. So that's great that you really have so many ways to engage them. Tell us a little bit more, Connie, yes. um, about the first woman mayor in New York State, because that is quite an interesting story in and of itself, isn't it? Well, it is. Uh, so Anna McQuaid Mason, here in the village, 1918, 1919, uh, she was considered not the word mayor, but uh, president and sheriff. So those were her two roles. And she held the village board meetings at her home. Uh, she had uh, children to take care of. So uh, she worked as the mayor out of her home. And um, interesting at that time, then we skip up to 2017 when we have our second female mayor, Molly Riley. Uh, and then in between, I happened to put my grandmother in there because uh, during World War II, uh, one of my grandmothers was the first female village board member. So we have information about her from newspapers and letters, correspondence. And then from Anne McQuaid Mason, we also have newspaper articles and uh, personal correspondence. Well, that is certainly uh, a long gap between mayors, isn't it, in terms of, of women who got to serve uh, serve their community in that way. But of course, as we know now, there are more opportunities for women in, especially in local politics, because um, not everyone has the time to serve. And so it, I think especially for folks who um are maybe approaching their retirement years, they really have the time to devote to their local affairs, don't they? Yes, yes. But we're seeing you know, here in the community uh, more women involved in politics and, uh, and, and younger women, too, who have uh, careers outside the home as well as uh, families uh, to take care of as well. 
So, Connie, this is the 100th anniversary for the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. So tell us a little bit about how, what the office has planned for this centennial celebration, because that's taking place in all, all over the state in lots of communities and lots of parks and historic places, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And um, the one of the signature events for this Thousand Islands region is going to be one of our events, which takes place uh, at the end of July, and that is the North American War of 1812 Grand Tactical. Uh, so this is a, a gathering of living history presenters. Uh, they'll be coming from the U.S. and Canada. Uh, we held this in 2010, so we're holding it again this year for the, for the centennial. Um, one of the other things um, which I have in my notes here is that um, as the state looks back over the 100 years and celebrates, certainly protecting land is extremely important. And we see this all the time. So protecting land. And we have a perfect example here uh, with Horse Island. So uh, just a few years ago, uh, the American Battlefield Trust uh, purchased Horse Island, which was part of the land for the Battle of Sackett's Harbor. So they purchased that New York State now has Horse Island and a small piece of land on the mainland opposite. Uh, so this is a very, very tangible example of how New York State Parks uh, proceeds with their mission, and that is for land preservation. Another area uh, that uh, Parks focuses on, of course, is education. And to proceed with education, uh, financially helping out schools, the parks have a program called Connect Kids. And this is a grant program that financially assists schools to bring students to nature centers, uh, the recreation parks, and to state historic sites. And we've been making use of this grant program over the last few years. Very, very beneficial uh, to get students here. In the springtime, we will have hundreds of school students come to the historic site each each year, as we are this year as well. Well, that's a, that's a great way to uh, uh, really get kids interested in the history of their area and the um, things that happened many, many years before uh, they came along. So what will visitors be able to see? What can they expect to see during the remaining weeks of the exhibit there at Sackett's Harbor, Connie? Uh, one of the other aspects of that centennial, which ties into the exhibition that I want to mention, is a, a state parks initiative called Our Whole History. And it's a way of looking at the underrepresented uh, to bring the stories of all people uh, here in New York State to the forefront. So within our exhibition, we are also uh, talking about uh, the African-American presence during the War of 1812 here at Sackett's Harbor. Um, the Oneida Nation allies to the U.S. during the War of 1812. We talk about that as well. And then, of course, we've uh, given some examples about the women's story. Connecting all that to our programs, coming up in June, we have a Haudenosaunee art focus of workshops and presentations on the weekend of June 14 and 15. So we were looking at uh, traditional beadwork and corn husk art. Art objects made out of corn husk, such as the corn husk um, faceless dolls. So we have presenters for that. And um, we also have another program that's going to be called The Power of the Press. And that is being developed. Uh, so our partners at Hay Memorial Library are, are sort of pulling that together. And then uh, we have some music involved. So this coming weekend, uh, we're doing a program with the library, the Story Walk, and we happen to have uh, a young musician who's going to play Celtic music during, during that program. And at the very end of our series, uh, the last weekend of June, we have a jazz trio who are going to be here. So very American and uh, very democracy focused uh, as American jazz. So, Connie, tell me, during the course of a, of a normal year when you don't have a special 
traveling exhibit like this, what are the kinds of things that you offer to people there? Are you open year round? Um, no, we open uh, in mid May. Okay. And then uh, we step up our hours as we get our seasonal employees uh, because many of the employees are either high school students or college students. So once they're all here, we add more hours. So the heart of the summertime is really our, our focus for the public. But we're open then through Labor Day weekend and then Saturdays up through mid October. Uh, but year-round, we are dealing with research questions. Uh, we're doing our planning for the summer season. We always have weekend programs of, of a great variety. Uh, last week, Memorial Day weekend, our guest speaker was the director of the Fort Drum Museum. And he did a, a wonderful presentation about uh, minorities in the military uh, in, in the past, the history of that. So we are always doing programming. And as I mentioned, our reading and discussion series, we do one in the spring, one in the fall, those are evening programs. So, um, and, and we also host motor coach tours. So motor coach tours come from us, come here from all over. Uh, our first one of the season, our visitors were from uh, Queens, New York, and all of their travelers were um, Indo-Caribbean uh, descendants from the Caribbean, Trinidad, Tobago, Guyana, Suriname. So that's uh, that, that's an interesting look at what your year looks like, especially when you are more focused on summer visitors than you are the rest of the year. So Connie, what what are the kinds of research questions you get? What would you know? What what can people expect when they when they have a question about how uh, Sackett's Harbor? What kind of things do you um, tell them? Well, it's it's extremely diverse. Uh, so we have a uh, right at the moment we have a gentleman who's researching. Um, a two of the Civil War cannon that we have here on the site. And uh, so we're looking at uh, the, the maker's mark on those cannon. We relay that information. We uh, have an, actually an original letter from 1863 where a young woman here in the village described seeing 20 of these cannon being delivered to Sackett by vessel of some kind. And then hauled up the slope to the, the 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 bluff at the navy yard. So so that's one question. We sometimes get questions about Madison Barracks, the former army post. We have questions that come in about the War of 1812. Sometimes it's it's someone who had an ancestor, maybe who fought here. They're trying to find out more about not only that person, but what would that person's life have been like here during the war years. But the questions can be extremely diverse. Sounds like it. So as we start to wrap up, Connie, do you have any final thoughts? What would you like somebody thinking about coming to the exhibit or to the battlefield to know and be prepared to um, really dig into it and find out about it? What are your what are you thinking? What what do you want people to be thinking about when they come to Sackett's Harbor? Yes. Well, if they're here during the time of the Smithsonian exhibit and our exhibit, I think uh, we, we want people to really ponder what is their role in democracy today. So how do you fit into that? What are you doing? Are you just sitting back or are you actively engaged in, in civic responsibility? Um, once the exhibition leaves, uh, then we have our historic site and the structures and I think one of the wonderful things about our historic site that it is an integral part of this community. We do not have a big fence along the property line of those 70 acres. Uh, so it's very easy to flow in and out of the property, making it a very important uh, destination, as well as for our local uh, visitors and our local population to know and appreciate that we are one of the top War of 1812 sites in the country. Well, I appreciate you talking about uh, uh, voting and uh, getting engaged in, in the civic uh, world, because that, of course, is what we at the League of Women Voters 
also advocate for. So I appreciate so much you having taken the time to come in today, talk about what's going on there at the uh, battlefield, talk about the traveling exhibit and what people can expect to find. It's, uh, it's great to be able to kind of dig into these local resources that maybe people aren't as familiar with as they could be. And the League of Women Voters has a space within the exhibition. And uh, the League members um, on the first weekend brought in literature. And uh, you can register, you can have your papers there to register to vote. So the League of Women Voters from this area is, is very strongly represented. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. So thank you again, Connie, for coming in and for giving us this uh, this great look at your at your uh, at your park and where it fits into the larger picture here in New York State. These conversations are a production of North Country Matters, which is a civic collaboration between the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember. Our North Country matters.